Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the Bitcoin chart from ClarkMoody.com. You can see that the Bitcoin is stuck here at about 143. Uh, it's in a tra tight trading range between about 142.7 and 143. Now, this is to be expected. This is the type of action that you see uh, before you get a massive breakout. Uh, we saw that before all the way down here around 50. Uh, we saw the same thing occur again when we broke out uh, up above uh, 75. Uh, we had the same thing here around 95. And uh, of course I've explained this before why you see this sort of trading pattern. Uh, you usually get one big sell-off before the market stabilizes and then uh, we get this uh, approaching the resistance very very slowly and each time the price dips it's bet it's uh, met by aggressive buyers at a higher and higher low so that's how you get this type of formation that's the formation that we've seen before there's no reason to think that it won't follow through in the same manner that it's followed through before and that is an explosion in price to the upside uh, that I expect to uh, rapidly run to 150 and beyond. Ultimately, I think this big move is probably going to culminate. I'm going to stand by my prediction of $300 on the Bitcoin in this in this move. So I want to go over to a lot of the news that's uh, coming fast and furious, uh, especially in regards to some of the exchanges and some other stuff that's going on. Before we do that, let's take a couple of questions. Uh, this is from the forum. When the U.S. and other governments say cryptocurrencies are not legal for trade, and this is from Zedster, with the way crypto is exploding now, I could easily see governments making make the knee-jerk reaction of saying that cryptocurrencies cannot be accepted for legal tender and even force banks to stop transactions with exchanges. Anytime the Fed feels threatened, they do whatever is necessary to save their paper. Case in point, the Liberty Dollar. Although this does not stop crypto, this will surely cause the price to crash horribly. This outcome just seems way too simple. What am I missing here? Love the site and the videos. Keep up the good work, Zed. Well, I think there's a couple of things you're missing with this. Uh, first of all, the key ruling by uh, FinCEN, well, not a ruling, but a clarification, that cryptocurrencies are not money. Uh, so they are not under their regulation. Uh, the only time that anything's under their regulation is when it's traded for dollars or other currencies, real currencies is the term they use, uh, which can become a method of laundering money and so uh, it's their job to regulate that. Uh, as I point out many times, if you're just trading cryptocurrencies back and forth or trading them for gold and silver or trading online for work done or uh, real goods but not money, then uh, the regulations from the Treasury do not affect you. You're considered a user. Now, could that change? Yes, it could change. but. Uh, and that's the next point we want to talk about is this Liberty Dollar. Now, the reason Bernard von Neuthaus, or whatever his name is, uh, got nabbed on that is because, first of all, he called it a dollar. And that's uh, really dumb. And uh, second of all is the way the coin looked. So what they actually got him on was existing law uh, about counterfeiting dollars. So uh, that's how they got him. Now that is not anything that would apply to the cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin especially, because it does not make a claim of being a dollar. It does not even make a claim of being money. And uh, therefore, there are no existing laws to regulate it. Now, the question is, are the governments going to make a knee-jerk reaction? Well. I don't think they can make a knee-jerk reaction because you're talking about the Congress making a knee-jerk reaction. And uh, the Congress doesn't make knee-jerk reactions for the most part. So uh, with the level of competence that we have in Congress, uh, I can just imagine the debate 
uh, we'd probably have to have a remedial education session for the vast majority of congressmen to even know what cryptography is, much less cryptocurrency. So uh, I think that uh, it's a long ways off to see any kind of legislation about the Bitcoin or the other cryptocurrencies. And uh, if that happens, uh, we'll probably see a reaction in the price when they start to debate that. I think we're still at the point now that they don't really want to debate the issue because it's just going to uh, cause that much more attention to be drawn to it. And, uh, of course, that many more people will rush into it. So uh, I don't agree with those conclusions. The next question from Noodles Doctor, Bitcoin relative to gold. Hi, Brother John F. My question concerns the relative price of Bitcoin to in relation to gold. Since Bitcoin is limited to 21 million coins, I think the most amount of gold in ounces above ground is something like 10 billion ounces. Assuming that Bitcoin survives the going to zero critics, what would be the Bitcoin to gold ratio relative price potential in regards to its scarcity? Well, you could just do a simple ratio there, uh, and uh, the math would tell you that at uh, 20, let's just say 20 million to 10 billion, that's going to be 550 to each billion. So that's going to be a 500 to 1 ratio. So if it was a straight ratio, then the Bitcoin on that would be uh, worth 500 times the price of gold, which would put the price at roughly uh, approaching a million dollars of Bitcoin. Now, I don't think that's realistic, but uh, again, the Bitcoin was trading at a penny, and if anyone would have told you that the price of the Bitcoin would be approaching one-tenth of the price of gold at per ounce, which is it is right now, with the Bitcoin sitting at 140-something, uh, it's approaching 10% of the value of an ounce of gold. No one would have believed you if you would have told them that two years ago, uh, including myself. <laughs> so uh, it's quite possible, I believe it's quite possible to see uh, even possibly this year a one-to-one -one, uh, Bitcoin gold ratio, but we'll have to wait and see. So Let's get over to the blog and talk about some of the important stories that have been hitting. Uh, Vercurex has been down. I don't know if the reason they were down was because of a hack attack, uh, perhaps because uh, they had uh, uh, old software. I don't really know. But we do have announcements from them. Uh, this is uh, what they said today. Uh, short wrap-up. Uh, service is not available. All the coins are safe. We've ordered new larger hardware to migrate our platform to. We have currently no ETA for the new equipment. Uh, best estimate is Monday. We'll, of course, clear the order book when reopening the exchange. Permanent decisions, discontinuation of stop order functionality. Solid coin training will not be resumed. Uh, we will close down solid coin support by latest the 14th of April please withdraw your coins IX coin trading will not be resumed we will close down IX coin support by latest the 14th of April please withdraw your coins temporary restrictions trading fee reduced to 0.1 percent till the end of April etc so that's the latest although if we go to the Twitter feed from Vercurex you can see five hours ago they posted we will reopen the trading platform on Sunday around 14.00 Greenwich Mean Time. We have made substantial changes in the past day and need some more time. So they're looking to come back up online. And, uh, of course, the other big news, exchange-based news today, is the other big alt cryptocurrency exchange, which is BTC-E. And uh, they have added the uh, TRC coin and the PPC coin. And uh, those are now trading. So if you go over to the BTC-E site, you can see here you've got a uh, PP coin trading there and a TRC coin trading there. Now the uh, price action 
is flat line due to this one spike here. I'm assuming as soon as that rolls off, as soon as these spikes roll off, we're going to see a more accurate read on that. So if you go down and look at the order book, uh, it's fairly decent. You can see you've got already uh, listed for sale 434,000 PP coins and a total of uh, uh, 737 Bitcoins bidding for those. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. And uh, let's check the uh, TRC. And we've got a total of 174 Bitcoins bidding for 36,000 TRC. So uh, with uh, Vercurex being down, it looks like uh, BTC took the opportunity to take away that business because uh, up until that point, the TRC and the PPC were only trading over at Vercurex. So we'll see if they can come online and uh, pull some of that business back. I think it would be very good if they could because uh, we have we have exchanges but uh, as Max Kaiser pointed out today we don't have nearly enough exchanges and of course what we want are a large number of virtual currency exchanges and the reason we want that is because we want to have the arbitrage opportunities and uh, allow the market to ride itself and uh, get some very vigorous trading going on between these alt currencies. So there's a lot of stories on the blog and uh, let me jump over. Uh, before I do that, uh, I did post a chart of the Litecoin. Uh, we had a uh, very large uh, correction in the Litecoin. You can see that it dropped. Uh, this actually constitutes a 61.8% uh, Fibonacci retracement and you can see the technical bounce there and that uh, we're now rallying in the Litecoin so uh, I jumped on board uh, I bought some of the dips on the way down and then jumped on board very heavily here at uh, this bottom so hopefully we're gonna get a good rally in the Litecoin and uh, that would be exciting uh, but uh, over to the Max Kaiser uh, where he posted here about the vulnerability of the Bitcoin payment processors. Uh, this was his post today. How vulnerable is Bitcoin payment processor BitPay to less than robust market making on Mt. Gox? Although the Bitcoin design is very good and decentralized, the exchanges are all virtually dependent upon a single one Mt. Gox. Any other exchange are all shadows reflecting the Mt. Gox prices. All payment processors such as BitPay depend on Mt. Gox. This is a single point of failure that would initiate a chain reaction towards an economic catastrophe. Mt. Gox didn't prove to be reliable at all. Uh, the DDoSs are an embarrassment and the Mt. Gox mobile application is becoming abandoned where I'm very worried about this deal with Coin Labs. They claim that they will be able to seduce institutional investors and yada yada. Really, will they be able to handle all that extra traffic? and be invulnerable to another DDoS attack. It is embarrassing how a single DDoS made Bitcoins from being praised in the media to Bitcoin hacked overnight. And uh, so you can continue reading. So I heartily agree with that. Uh, I think that there needs to be a lot more diversification in that. And I don't necessarily think that, and this has been my recommendation for my last four or five videos if you watch them since the FinCEN announcement came out about the regulation of the trading I have been proposing that what we need to see are a lot of uh, virtual currency exchanges that do not use any real currencies uh, now the uh, trading over at BTC-E and also the trading that was on Vercurex both of those have trading uh, in real currencies, dollars, rubles, etc. Uh, that's fine for them, but uh, I think that the next exchanges that open up should probably just trade only the cryptocurrencies against each other. The reason why I say that is because FinCEN has given a green light. Uh, those exchanges 
would have absolutely no regulation whatsoever. Uh, people would just be trading cryptocurrencies against each other. That would create more arbitrage opportunities. Uh, I, I really like the alt cryptocurrencies, as I pointed out before, because when you're ready to take some profit in the Bitcoin, uh, you don't necessarily want to go back into the real currencies, but you want to take some profit because you may think that the price is very high. Let's say at this price spike here at 144 or something. Uh, you think that that has run too far in the short term and you want to unload some bitcoins. Well, if you had uh, a lot of exchanges that traded other things, possibly even exchanges that had gold and silver uh, on uh, deposit there's another idea if they had gold and silver on deposit again those would not be regulated by any money laundering regulations because there would be no real monies there so there's a lot uh, to be done in this space I think Max Kaiser is uh, totally right uh, the uh, Bitcoin has proved itself it is uh, unassailable they cannot attack the Bitcoin so what they're doing is they're attacking the exchanges uh, I don't really have any doubt in my mind about who's behind these DDoS attacks uh, DDoS attacks uh, usually come from hackers and uh, bitcoins are the types of things that hackers like so uh, I think these are more organized attacks uh, probably coming from the banks and uh, we know uh, if we use a, a sort of Occam's razor on that or a key bono or whatever uh, we'd have to say uh, who stands to lose the most if the Bitcoin succeeds I think it's pretty clear it would be the credit card payment systems and the banks would lose the most and so that's most likely who is behind the attacks but uh, as I said Max Kaiser's suggestion is an excellent one uh, anybody who has the capital or the uh, wherewithal uh, should move now while there's a very low number of people in that space. I'm sure that Vercurex and BTC-E are doing a very profitable business. Uh, we also need that competition because of the fee competition. Right now on BTC-E, if you want to withdraw your Litecoins, uh, the last time I checked it was a fee of one Litecoin. Now with the Litecoin being nearly $4 now, that's a little steep. I think they cut it in half, but even at $2 that's steep. So uh, competition in that space would also cause the fees to be reduced uh, if those exchanges wanted to continue that sort of volume. So we need more competition in the space. Hopefully that's what we're going to get. Uh, I'm looking for a breakout. I'm not going to say tonight, but I do expect a breakout above the old 147 high and on through 150. I actually expect it this weekend uh, before next week even starts. And we'll talk to you next time.